All right, so today I want to show you what I consider to be 10 of the most popular pet ball pythons. As a matter of fact, I've been doing a lot of live streams on the weekends. I've been doing a three hour live stream on Saturday, three hours on Sunday for the last couple months. And it seems like in the last few weeks, a lot of people have been jumping over there and asking a similar question. A lot of people ask, they'll say, hey, I'm not really interested in breeding ball pythons, but I want to get something just as a pet. And what would you recommend? And technically you could use any ball python is a pet you know there's like hundreds of genes and probably millions of different combinations but it's kind of interesting it seems like a lot of pet owners just looking for a pet ball python seem to migrate to certain genes and certain combinations and I can think of 10 genes and combinations that are pretty much the most popular when I actually see a lot of people at the reptile shows just looking around for pets people online asking about which pet snake they should get as far as the genetics in their ball python so today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you what I consider to be the top 10 pet ball pythons. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start with the number one most popular pet ball python that I've actually seen in the entire ball python industry. And that would definitely have to be the normal ball python. This is what a normal looks like. And some people call this a classic or a wild type. Essentially what it is, it's a ball python that is completely devoid of all genes. It's like a blank slate as far as breeding ball pythons. And it's kind of interesting, my first year when I produced a whole bunch of hatchlings, I think I produced maybe about a hundred hatchlings on one of my very first really good years and I brought all those hatchlings to the reptile show. As a matter of fact I had a table that could hold like 60 hatchlings and I was like I had so many hatchlings I was like doubling them up in the display and you know I kind of stood back and I was thinking all right what do you think is the first one that's going to sell here on my display and I was thinking all right I bet people are going to buy the bamboos like the snake that I have around my neck at the beginning of the video that's a really awesome snake and I had all these different combinations nations and I thought you know at the time I had maybe about 10 or 15 normals in my display case and I thought nobody's gonna buy those normals as a matter of fact I was actually thinking of actually taking all my normals and then wholesaling them to someone else because I didn't think anyone would buy them and come to find out my very first hatchling that I ever sold at a reptile show was a normal and then the second snake that I sold was a normal and then the third snake I sold at that very same reptile show was a normal and then it kind of clicked in my mind hey everybody is looking for normals and you might ask yourself well why would people want a normal and it, most of the times people are coming in it's like a family and then they have kids and the kids want a snake and you know the parents are pretty much looking for the the least expensive ball python just to kind of get your feet wet in ball pythons and let me tell you the normals are the least expensive I've actually seen normals at some reptile shows sell as little as $20 for a normal and I'd say usually the average price at a reptile show is usually like $50 for a normal. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are kind of looking at all the different tables. All right, what, what did you price your normals at? Because usually it's the first one to go. And I've actually sold normals for like $50 and the guy next to me is selling them for 40. And then you have another table across the way selling them for 20. And it doesn't really matter at the reptile show. You don't really have that much competition because let me tell you, everybody sells out of normals, usually by the middle of the show. And then if everyone else is selling them really cheap, usually at that point, they're all migrating over to my table and say hey I'll take your $50 normal because right now it's the cheapest ball python in the whole reptile show so normals are definitely as far as what I've seen pretty much the most popular especially at the reptile shows all right, so here is the number two most popular, and that is the blue-eyed leucistic, the all-white snake with the blue eyes. And I've actually produced some of these at some reptile shows, and it seems like everybody that comes up to the table, they're just naturally drawn to the completely white ball python, and everybody wants to hold it. And I would say most people that actually buy a blue-eyed leucistic are actually looking to, to actually keep it as a pet instead of a breeder. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, they'll buy it, and they won't even know the genes or the genetics or anything about the ball python they just know it's a white snake and they want it as a pet and when I started in ball pythons the blue eyed leucistics were actually selling for about $300 pretty much across the board and the prices have really increased now they're selling for anywhere from like four or five hundred all the way up to seven hundred for some of these blue eyed leucistics it's pretty crazy but you know if you, if you actually have some money you're looking for a pet ball python that's a little bit higher end I'd say most most people go with the all-white snake with the bright blue eyes. 
All right, so here is number three. I'd say probably the number three most popular that I've actually seen selling is pets. A lot of people showing me their pet ball pythons online. That would definitely have to be the pastel. And a lot of people at the reptile shows, as a matter of fact, they'll actually come up to my table and they'll be looking at all my snakes and they're like, all right, I just want the cheapest snake for my kids, which is usually like a normal ball python for $50. And sometimes these pastels, I'd say on average, they go for maybe about $80 for pastel, I've actually seen them anywhere from maybe about 75 all the way to like $125. So not a whole lot more to step up from a, from a normal ball python to a yellow ball python. The pastels can be really super yellow. And especially if you actually have like a super pastel, although the super pastel would be a little bit higher. So I'd say probably the pastel is probably the third most popular because it's like one step up from the normal where you just spending a little bit more money and the pastel is one of the most popular genes in all of all python so there's a really there's a lot of them as far as you go to the reptile show and let me tell you almost everybody has a pastel in their display case for sale and it's just a little bit more than a normal people naturally kind of gravitate towards the pastel for a pet ball python so number four, I'm gonna say it's the banana. And I think the banana is real popular mainly because it kind of looks like a banana and it has a really cute name, the banana. As a matter of fact, there's uh, there's another gene that's pretty much exactly the same as the banana called the coral glow. And if you actually look at the numbers, the banana versus the coral glow, the bananas are way more popular than the coral glows. I think it's the name banana. And it's, it's kind of interesting doing YouTube videos. If I I do anything as far as like a title or a thumbnail that has like banana ball python it seems like it does really well over on YouTube everyone wants to see the banana which is pretty wild and then the bananas there I'd say they're, they're they're kind of in that price range with the blue eyed leucistics so if you have like a few hundred dollars you know I'd say normally the bananas are about $250 something like that although they, they can vary quite a bit I'd say the bananas probably don't vary as much as the blue eyed the cystics, which can really vary in price a lot, which is pretty interesting. All right, so I'm gonna say for number five, the bamboo. <laughs> this is this is actually a picture of Bobby, the snake that I have around my neck. And I think having Bobby around my neck in every single video, doing videos every single day, year after year, and everybody sees Bobby, it seems like it's becoming more and more popular that everybody wants a bamboo, and just as a pet, people looking for a pet ball python. I think because Bobby is so incredibly docile and friendly, mainly because he's on my shoulder every single day but it seems like it's really driving the kind of the pet side of the the bamboo gene which is pretty interesting I've seen a lot of people kind of gravitate towards this and I'd say it's you know, it's kind of catching on right now but I would say you know this will probably gain more and more in popularity as far as one of the top pet ball pythons all right, so for number six, I'm gonna say the Firefly. So this is actually the combination of the pastel and the fire. And kind of the interesting thing, when you add fire to a pastel, it really cleans up the snake. A lot of times it can make it a lot brighter and cleaner than just the pastel when you add fire to it. And the cool thing about the Fireflies is when they age and mature, they really keep their brightness and their color as an adult, where a lot of times the pastels can kind of fade as they they get older and age and it's, it's kind of interesting it seems like it's one of the more common combinations partly because it's relatively inexpensive too so you know usually for like your single gene animals like a pastel or a fire you can see, you can kind of figure the price to be right around $80 so something like this I've actually seen these anywhere from like maybe about 150 to 180 dollars for a firefly so not a whole lot more money but a lot of people are looking for a snake that'll age really well and look really good as an adult. I think that's why a lot of people are really drawn towards the fireflies. 
All right, so the Pied is coming in at number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, <laughs> so this is number seven. And the Pied's kind of interesting. It's one of the first jeans that have been on the market. And the Pied brings in these big splotches of white over here on the snake. And sometimes you can have a high white Pied. Sometimes you can have a low white Pied. It's almost like they're like snowflakes. Like no two Pieds are exactly the same. And I really like the low white Pieds because it's kind of the interesting thing about the thing about this is if you have a low white pie with just a little bit of white, the color on the rest of the pie is really jumbled up, really unlike any other gene combination that you can make to really jumble up the pattern on these low white pies. As a matter of fact, if you actually add other genes into the pie, like Anchi, Anchi will pretty much always make a low white pie. Pretty much my favorite ones, I'd say, are probably like the 50-50, where it's 50% white and 50% colored, and it seems like like the ones that have more white are a little bit more expensive than the ones that uh, that are like a low white like this. So a lot of times you can pick up a low white pie like this for less money than the high white pies. But it's kind of interesting if I bring people into my snake room, especially people that have never seen ball pythons before, and I'm showing them all my snakes through my whole collection. And when I actually take a pied out and show them just a single gene straight pied, I get more oohs and ahs from that pie than I do in any other snake in my collection. I think people just really like the really high contrast between the white and the colored part of the snake. It's pretty amazing. So number eight has to be the albino. These are really super popular. As a matter of fact, I've actually produced quite a few albino hatchlings. And let me tell you, when I bring those albino hatchlings to the shows, they sell really super quick. And a lot of people are actually looking for pets when they buy either a pied or an albino. It's kind of interesting because those are really in demand genes for a lot of breeders too, as well as pet owners. And I think the, the cool thing about the albino, a lot of people are attracted to the albinos because they have really super bright red eyes and people are just like wow that eye is so bright that is the, the most amazing snake and a lot of times they can have a lot of high contrast between the white and the yellow on the albinos it's a, it's a pretty amazing gene and it's a really good seller if, if you're actually thinking about breeding ball pythons let me tell you albinos are the way to go just produce straight albinos and they sell pretty good I'd say albinos when I was selling them I think that I was selling them for like $250. Let's see, this one looks like it's still for sale. So this one is actually listed as $300. So kind of in that price range, about $250 to $300. Kind of in the same price range as like the, just the straight pies, like the single gene. I haven't even looked at the prices. I kind of wanted to double check this one. Yeah, this so this pie actually sold for $325. So kind of in that same several hundred dollar price range. And it seems like if you get above about $300 for your pets, a lot of people kind of shy away from anything over $300. It seems like that's kind of like the maximum as far as what you'd see for some of your, for some of your pet ball pythons. All right, so for number nine, I would say the pinstripe as far as, in my experience, as a matter of fact, you can pretty much, you know, at this point, you know, you're coming all the way down, you can pretty much pick any other gene in all of ball pythons as far as what would be number nine and number 10. But as far as, you know, kind of my experience in my collection, if I'm selling at the reptile shows, I actually produce quite a few pinstripes, just the straight pinstripe hatchlings. And it's pretty much the brightest gold snake. They can be really super gold. As a matter of fact, if you actually see them in person, it almost looks like a metallic gold, like it's made of metal or something, which I think really attracts people to a lot of the pinstripes. And I would also say that the pinstripes can vary quite a bit. I've actually seen some that are a lot more browned out. I don't know if it's a certain version of the pinstripe. Uh, it seems like it might be line dependent from the different shades of the gold in the pinstripe. But I'd say pretty much overall, it's a really gold snake and it really attracts a lot of people as far as what I'm kind of seeing at the reptile shows when I'm selling snakes. And the other thing about the pinstripe is it's kind of in that same price range as the pastels. So a lot of people are coming up to the table, they're looking for normals for like 50 bucks and they're like, all right, you know, for a, a few more dollars, you know, like for $80 or $100, I've actually seen them maybe up to like maybe 125 for a pinstripe, pretty much at the maximum, but they're not really that expensive. And I think that is what really sells 
the pinstripe. So take a look at this one. This is 125, which is pretty much, the, it seems like the prices are going up quite a bit now. Where this was kind of like the high end, you know, it's kind of like the normal price now, 125 for a pinstripe, which is pretty much the average price. Of course, this one's also 100% het azanthic. So sometimes if you have hets kind of going into like your pet quality snakes, people don't really care about the het azanthic. They're just looking for just the straight pinstripes. But I'd say this is kind of in the price range where a lot of people would be willing to spend that kind of money just for a pet. All right, so the, for the last one, I'm actually gonna throw this in. A lot of people have asked me, hey, you know, I'm looking for a pet. I want the best bang for my buck. How can I get that where I won't break the bank, but I'll make some really, uh, that I'll actually get a really amazing combination of genes for relatively little money. And I kind of direct people towards the desert combination. So the desert's kind of one of those problematic genes where the females have a problem as far as the fertility of the eggs. A lot of people say don't breed the deserts because well, I've actually heard when the desert females lay eggs, they could potentially pass away. They could die in the process of laying eggs. And if that female lays eggs, uh, pretty much every single time you get infertile eggs for some reason. And kind of the whole project just tanked and nobody really invests in the desert but you can actually come over here at morphmarket.com and you can every now and then you'll actually see a few deserts popping up people are working on the deserts and you can get some really amazing combinations and they're really super cheap too so take a look at this one this is actually an enchi woma desert possible vanilla and you can see it's listed as a pet only mainly because it's a female desert so the the male deserts you can actually breed a male desert through your collection no problem Problem at all but if you actually produce females then you have to sell the females as pet quality only and a lot of people don't want to get stuck with uh, a lot of snakes they want to sell as pet quality but a lot of times you can get some really amazing combinations with uh, with desert for really cheap this one's only $225 I've actually seen some spectacular combinations with desert in there especially if you're getting a female you, which is a pet only because a lot of the breeders really don't want a snake like this only the people looking for pets would really buy a snake like this it's kind of interesting all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Patrick Gallagher asks, given that Bobby is a YouTube star, why have you retired Bobby from breeding? And that is a very good question. So the snake that I have around my neck here, this is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. He's an eight year old male, and he used to be a really big breeder here in my collection. And one of the reasons I don't breed him anymore is because now I'm actually using his offspring to breed all my females. So essentially what I did is I took Bobby, bred it into other combinations, and then I made a bamboo with other genes in the mix. So for example, one of them I actually produced a bamboo lesser, a blue-eyed leucista combination. So if I actually take that bamboo lesser, one of Bobby's offspring, and breed it to something else, Half the offspring come out as bamboo, half come out as lesser, versus if I would take Bobby and breed it to something else, I would get half normals and half bamboos. Not very many genes in Bobby. It's pretty much 50% as far as the, the bamboo that comes out of Bobby. So as a matter of fact, I actually just produced one this year. It's actually four genes, possibly five. It is a bamboo, pastel, pinstripe, calico, possible head desert ghost one of bobby's grandkids i guess you'd say so it's the same line of bamboo floating around in my collection i just don't use bobby because he doesn't have that many genes and i'd say a lot of people what they do you know with some of their old you know the, like their single gene males that they started with once they get multiple genes they'll start selling them off and then just keep the younger multi-gene combinations to work with they really keep enhancing their collection and in this case instead of selling bobby i decided just to make him a youtube star here on my YouTube channel. And the other thing is, is I have, as a matter of fact, I actually make a video every single day on YouTube. Most of those videos, I have Bobby in the video at the beginning and the end of every video. And if I was to actually breed them, you know, during probably about five months of the year, like mid-October, all the way to the middle of March, I'd actually move him through the female. So I put him with the female for like three to five days, move him to another female, move him to another female. So he pretty much wouldn't be in front of the camera 
if I was breeding them with the females. He'd be in the tubs with the females or taking a break eating and resting from the females and kind of cycling through. That's probably the biggest reason that I don't breed them now. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.